All right, we're unmuted. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, what is that? What is that? What is that? Are uh, you going to say hello to everybody? Uh, yeah, I said Zavali? hi. Uh, I yeah, yeah. It's it was a pretty pitiful, pitiful. Oh. Yeah, hello. <laughs> I got nervous. Okay, hi everyone. Okay. Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. So, uh, sadly. Yeah. How much do you know about mayo? Ooh, I mean, it's made with oil, eggs, and yeah, yeah, salt. Yeah. That, Acid or know. something like that. And most of it, yeah, yeah. The eggs is to emulsify the uh, the oil. It's common to use. I know it's common yeah, yeah. to use very it common, uh, very. to make toast. For like mm -hmm. BLTs or other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you think it has so much of a uh, bad reputation? I think because a lot of people are. So mayonnaise is something that you should probably keep in the fridge, and I imagine there's a lot of people who just don't. Their first experience with mayonnaise is like a warm packet that's been slightly sun warmed, and that's gross. <laughs> Oh, yeah, especially if it uh, becomes, like, liquidy and such. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much mayo do you like? Mm, well, I tend to avoid mayo for uh, health reasons. Oh, why is that? Oh, uh, so it might be psychosomatic, but if I eat too much egg, uh, it feels like someone lit a fire in my stomach. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I how... eat it in very small doses. Mm -hmm. So how much is uh, too much of this uh, thick and creamy condiment? Mm, the equivalent of one full quiche. One full quiche? Yeah, yeah. Just a bunch of egg. Like, what do we talk about when it comes down to, like, quiche size? Because when I think of quiche, I think of a pie pan. A oh, yeah, pie yeah. pan's like, worth of So the... think like, a, like when they use, like, a muffin tin to make, like, a bunch of, like, individual quiches. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that that is okay. too much for me. So the quiche size or the muffin size or the, the muffin, muffin pan? size. If it was a full okay. pie size, I think I would die. So pretty much like a fistful of mayo would be uh, be your uh, limit. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Mayonnaise, everybody. I, I mostly go for pickles, though. That That's my go-to. Pickles are, are uh, yeah, very nice. Uh, do you like the dill or, like, the bread and butter? I mostly go for kosher. I like the bitter, briny taste. Ah. Uh -huh. Where, like, every time you bite it, there's that crunch, and then, like, the salt fills your mouth, and you're just like, yay, I could do this all day. <laughs> I never, uh, never encounter a bitterness with them, strangely. In, in, in comparison to a bread and butter, which is, like, a sweet pickle, and you're like... They come out of nowhere. Uh, to me, they they just pop out of pop out of nowhere, and I have to tolerate them in my in my sandwich. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, internet. Who has uh, turned their uh, or internet people has have a uh, gaze turned their gaze towards our direction. Hello and welcome to the Sir. This is an interview podcast where we interview VTubers, big or small, on their experiences before during, and even after being a VTuber, and what got them into VTubing, and their attitudes towards VTubing as work, community, and a marketplace. Uh, this podcast, of course, is structured within the methodologies and ethics of oral history to qualitatively record the life experiences of individuals in such internet culture with chronology and herbalization, but we're always open to being everywhere with everything at once with how chaotic VTubing can be. That's why there's a fire behind me. That's the chaos. And that chaos can easily uh, eat up uh, a lot of the background. Um, also, do know that we are... Uh, also, do know we will be asking you, the viewer, to collaborate with us and ask questions during the water break section of the video and provide us with either trivial or in-depth insights into the lives of our fun and complex individuals of the podcast or of the interview. Also, for those VTubers that want to come on, uh, our scheduling is still open. If you wish to share your story, send a message through the email and description below alongside our interviewees' socials or find it on this channel's about page and we'll uh, work out a date and time. The following qualifications as of now are having a model, a following of or around 100 uh, on uh, Twitch or YouTube. Exceptions liberally applied. 
um, and or some experience in uh, content creation, whether it be streaming or prepared content. And uh, let's see. Um, oh wait, I think I think uh, I'm about. Aren't about pages like extinct now? I remember distinctly that YouTube got rid of them, or at least tried. I think somewhat got rid of them. Now it's just like clicking on the uh, description of the channel and then it it's the about page but the, the the entire page is dead um judging from at least my experiences what oh yeah yeah they should they should do that do it do it do it do it you need you like it's really fun you should go do it yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's just a, a email and you're like dear him chan i stole your apple now what <laughs> I will hunt you down. Uh, I came And I will like... take you down. I will burn everything. I, I mean, you already dear. did. You blew me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the description. Yeah, it's in the description. Or about page. Um, alright. So, so, sadly. 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 Yeah. yeah. How about you introduce yourself? Pronouns Hello. and what you uh, yeah. do as a VTuber. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Sadly. I'm the Digital Imp. I use the pronoun she, her, and I mostly do dating sims, and lately I've been reading a ton of fanfic. Uh, I actually do that on Wednesdays, so tomorrow I read more fanfic. Mm -hmm. What's the, re the most recent uh, dating sim you played? Um, so I'm currently playing on Sundays Our Life. Uh, beginnings and always it's a pretty fun game it's more of a life sim than a dating sim but it has like dating elements you pretty much grow up next to the boy next door it's pretty fun it's a free to play game unless you get the dlc the dlc is really worth it though uh, it's by gb patch studios it's pretty fun hmm. ever, ever uh, played uh, or ever streamed uh, catawas shoujo i have not no all right nah. noted I'll add it to my list. I, ha I, gotcha. have, I have this thing on my uh, Discord where uh, my chat is allowed to uh, suggest games I should play. It says a lot of horror games right now and Dishonored. <laughs> oh, I see. Chat's always... Uh, viewers always like, like this. For some, always, always horror games, strangely. I I'm I've such encountered a coward. One... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm such a coward. Like, oh, uh, they want me to do... Uh, uh, what is it? Lethal Company? And on day one, I'm too much of a coward to even explore the first facility. <laughs> <laughs> so it's mostly just me being a coward and absolutely not making quota if I, I do, just... do it. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So how long have you been VTubing? Uh, we're... I've been affiliated for two full years, and I think I started in 2021. So we should be at, like, three years right now mm -hmm. i think around i think it was uh 298 followers on twitch if i remember uh, yeah. correctly yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm up to 295 now 95 uh, five more and uh my chat unlocks a, another character model that is a maid so I, i'm playing a game with them where i built a bunch of made versions of my character models mm -hmm. i see i see yeah and what kind of maids are we uh, talking? Are we talking about like uh, Chinese? Are we talking about French maids? Oh, are we did, talking I about did, the, did, the Japanese them. kind that has like, which is like a blend of a, of a, <laughs> of a shrine maiden and a maid? Hmm? I, yeah. I did a, like, I, I tried to make each of the characters made outfits a little bit different. So some are like a little bit like more cosplay Frenchy. Uh, like, look at me. There's a lot of skin. And then there's, you know, classic Japanese where it's just like a nice black dress with the apron and not a lot of skin showing. I see. Mm -hmm. And then the one for this model, which they unlock at 420 followers, I, uh, I like it. <laughs> I spent I a lot of time on it. Why have you been uh, going at this for uh, so long, or for uh, these three years? All right. Well, so this is a bit of a complicated story. Um, we got time. Uh, so, my family has always kind of stepped on anything I wanted to do. And one of my exes told me, you know, insert name here, no one would ever want to watch you. You're not entertaining. 
So I kind of was like, you know what? I want to try this because I always wanted to be a cartoon character growing up because I thought it would be cool. And yeah, so now I do this and uh, I get the joy of actually doing something I enjoy for a little bit of an income. And there's that little bit of satisfaction of, you know, spitefully proving them wrong. I so get that. Every, every new follow I get, I'm like, yeah, you said no one would like me. <laughs> I gotcha. Here we are at 295. I've proven you wrong, mother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. they wish they wish I would say that. Or back when mm -hmm. we were dating. They they we did not have a good uh, it, that was that was a really bad fallout and we will not go into that. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, is there a particular aim or at least a goal that you want to achieve with this uh, work? Or are you just pretty much going with the flow as a so, uh, content creator? So I'm going with the flow. It's something I have a passion for. Uh, like, this is enjoyable. This is, like, out of all the jobs I've ever worked in my life, all of the passion projects I've ever, like, pursued, this one is the most enjoyable like, it feels right, so I'm just going to keep doing it until it no longer sparks joy and it no longer feels right. But with how kind and uh, loving my chat is and how supportive they are, uh, I just, I have an absolute wonderful time. I gotcha. Um, going back from, uh, going to that uh, work history, let's, uh, let's delve into uh, what you were doing before VTubing. Um, uh, you mentioned that uh, you really started around uh, 2021, mm -hmm. uh, developing your uh, model around 2020. But let's uh, let's delve into what what was the uh, what was your daily uh, daily so, dues, so to speak. Um, we're talking uh, we're talking pre the before time of the COVID. Yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. Pre so the I, uh, I actually cupcake. Yeah, I actually spent nine years working for Regal Entertainment Movie Theaters. Uh, one of my mm -hmm. jobs was management until I got blackmailed out of that position. And then I the gotcha. next manager who came in uh, after the one who blackmailed me really liked how good I was at customer service. So my job became greet people at the door and be, hello and welcome to Regal. How can I help you today? Oh, mm -hmm. you're here to see that movie? That's fantastic. If you step right up over here to the counter, let's go ahead and get you those snacks, drinks, anything you need, and let's get you into that movie Lickety Split. And everyone in town really liked me, except for, like, the one person who didn't. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So you were, very, you were a very strong uh, people person. Yeah. Not only, uh, not only were you uh, managing people, but also you were, uh, you pretty much were the first one, uh, first person that they meet. Upon yeah. entering. And that's kind of what I did. Um, before that, I worked for the school district, uh, temp odd jobs. Either I helped in the special okay. education programs or I worked in the kitchens, uh, cooking, cleaning, mostly cleaning. Uh, uh, in terms of a uh, timeline, what do we, uh, where do we put the uh, Regal, uh, ex your uh, work in Regal and your work in um, education. Um, so I did the education uh, sporadically uh, between gotcha. like 2008 uh, until like 2012. Okay, 2008, 12. Okay. Yeah. It's very uh, difficult mm -hmm. work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no doubt, no doubt you're uh, working with a lot of... Uh... I once I once had a, a child yeah. uh, yeet me and an entire like gym size, you know, like one of those carts full of like basketballs. I gotcha. Like like eight feet. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of work and you can get injured if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. And then if that happens, uh, they don't like having you around anymore. So you get blacklisted on that site. So slowly you get less and less sites the more mm -hmm. injured you get. <laughs> mm hmm uh what kind of uh um education did you uh did you tend to uh either before or during this time so for my own education or like yeah. what grades did i help with um let's first start with um you've mentioned that you were working um in you were working with kids 
and mm -hmm. I assume educating them as like a teacher? Um, when the, so I didn't have any like substitute for regular classes. I mostly was okay. a stand in for uh, the programs that help kids with more needs. You know, you have like, a yeah, bad time education. focusing. My job is to sit there and hang out and keep you on focus. You I have you. a hard time comprehending what's being said in class. I'm there to help you comprehend it. So I was kind of just a helper, which is one of the oh. favorite things I like to do. I like to help people. Oh, I see. Uh, what background did you have to uh, get you in that position? Fun fact, uh, you just need to apply and pass uh, a few tests. Like <laughs> It's like going back to school, and they're like, here, here's the packet you have this time. Let's see how good you are at math, English, mm -hmm. uh, life, uh, science. And they basically test you on everything. And depending on how you do on those determines what kind of jobs you do. And I'm really, really bad at math, and my English skills are atrocious because uh, that's where my learning disabilities lie. So I have a hard time with those because of my dysgraphia and just my ability to get all of the things that go in my head on the paper is extremely I difficult. So I, I was only allowed to work in uh, basically special uh, education and uh, kitchen stuff because I did horrible at math and English. Mm hmm and they're like, you can come back in after studying and you can do like this. And I was like, so let me get this straight. I can work extra hard to learn this stuff enough that I can get actual substituting jobs, but get, get paid like less, or I can stick with what I'm getting and get paid more. Mm -hmm. And I did that. All right. All right. So the Regal stuff is, is uh, further into the 2010s or was that um, uh, so... in the 2000s? I kept trying to get up hired there for like a while and I had given up and uh, I was in this horrible crippling depression for a long time. Uh, I gotcha. Basically most of my life if we want to go into that. But I, uh, one of my friends was like, hey, when you go to apply for this job, no matter how horrible you feel and how like defeated you feel, I need you to do me a favor and just find something to smile about. And I'm sitting there in this theater, sitting in the chair waiting for my interview and I catch in the mirror what's uh, like one of those cardboard, uh, you know, stands in mm -hmm. the mirror directly above me. And it's it's one of those uh, gray Smurfs from like the second Smurf movie making I the stupidest face. And it just made me laugh. And I just held on to that mirth and I got the job. And then like two months in, I was promoted to manager. Gray Smurf. I wonder if it's the, it was the uh, it was the uh, crispy rat. Uh, uh, it's, the, crisp yeah, rat. It's, it's the gray one with the kind of like gingerish red hair. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, I think uh, Chris Pratt uh, played that. But, uh, um, and uh, what was your, oh, let's uh, not, then uh, delve into like uh, hobbies. What kind of hobbies were you doing at this time? During this time, uh, I was, I, I draw, I would RP on like, Tumblr and other places. Second uh, life. Most, yeah, uh, you know, I I do have a second life account. Uh, ah. I've had one for a long time. Uh, it's just kind of, it's like I I I don't I I can't even go into it anymore. Like, like it was something I got into because as a uh, trans individual, just the ability to escape. Uh, the meat vessel and be who I really am was such a draw that I just, I enjoyed it a lot. So I got into like a bunch of those things like IBUM and Second Life, Gaia Online. I ran up I a, uh, I ran up a, <laughs> a gold. <laughs> so before, like more recently, uh, they did like gender change potions. And I gotcha. because I was trans, anytime someone called me out for being a girl, I would magically turn back into a guy and be like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And then when they stopped paying attention, I was a girl again. And I, I did that so much with the previous gender change options, uh, which were partially broken, so it wasn't actually charging me, which is, which is a good thing because I ran up a, every time you bought it, it did an exponential increase in the gold you had to pay. And by the time they removed the option... I was up to like somewhere over two million gold in debt. Oh, wow, fluid. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Sometimes I change like six or seven times in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, so your social circles uh, came predominantly within uh, or were within the uh, within uh, the internet, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how much of how much of it uh, was more outside of that uh, setting? I I lived out in like the country, and that was like eleven miles away from all my friends. So yeah. unless I was actively at school or invited to hang out with a friend, I spent most of my time alone. And the internet was bad out there, so most of the time it was even just with books. So growing up, I. I didn't really have anyone to turn to, and I didn't have the information readily available to know I was trans. I just felt really wrong all the time. And I was like, well, I want to be a girl, but religious trauma, and now I can't do that. So I'm just going to, you know, wait for everyone to be dead, and then mm -hmm. I'll be me. And then we had, you know, everything happen, and I started breaking down. I actually confessed to one of my friends years before COVID that, you know, I think I'm a girl. And then I broke down again. My ex, uh, the one we discussed recently, really did not like me coming out as trans. I gotcha. Uh, yeah, and then in 2020, I just, I was done. I was done pretending to be that uh, that guy, and it, it was killing me every day. So, yeah, I was done. I just wanted to be me. I gotcha. And I kind of used VTubing as a... Uh, like a way to you know do that like uh my model actually became more femme with me as i uh went on i got you i see um we'll definitely go over your uh, model later but uh but uh hold on give me a moment give me a moment train a thought train a thought where are you choo choo um ah there we go uh so <laughs> Then, let's say, uh, well, how would you, how would you generally describe your activity on the internet, uh, before finding out about, uh, VTubers? Um, almost non-existent. Uh, outside non -existent? of interacting with my friends I made over the internet, uh, I didn't really do much. I didn't play games. I didn't really watch shows. Um, I got into watching like a couple like YouTubers. Uh, one of the first ones I started watching was actually uh, Jack uh, Septicai. And I was uh -huh. like, that's really fun. I'd like to do that. So I tried doing that for a while, uh, live action, doing all that stuff. But I hate being on camera because mask body uh femme mind and it just it broke me every time i tried really hard to ignore it but i couldn't do it i gotcha i gotcha and then um, uh miku uh, came out and they had like all the vocaloids and i was like i wonder if i could be an anime character and then <laughs> lo and behold uh we start getting all of these like vtubers popping up everywhere and i'm like the technology exists i could mm. i could just be a cartoon character okay how can i do this I can't spend a couple thousand dollars on a model. What am I going to do? Hello, and welcome to Vroid Studios. Make your own model. Really, really, uh, you know, on your own. As long as you're willing to put the time and effort into, you can make a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And boom. This is like the 30th rendition of the Zadley model. <laughs> I, so I then... Finally, I'm, I'm going to say this, and my main mod, if uh, she's listening, is going to call me a liar, but I'm finally satisfied with the way I look. <laughs> um so you would put this more within like uh 2019 20 uh mm -hmm. 20 yeah i yeah. started designing and drawing my model i would say at the very start of the pandemic so like in february is when i started designing it right. and i you know the view i found on steam all the like the stuff to make a model and then I was like, okay, once I make the model, what do I do? And then I started using Vulp for a while, and then they made it not uh, workable unless you were using the premium one. So mm. I've been using VC Face. It's a little bit harder on like a computer or a laptop because it, it runs yeah. really heavy, but it it works for what I need. Huh. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Good point. I've been. I I especially have a. Uh... Have issues with VC face still now, uh, but yeah. Um, 
Did you ever uh, upload or uh, did you have any other? Oh, wait, no, not my apologies. My apologies. Well, and now, what year, so to speak, uh, did uh, VTubing creep into your uh, preview? And uh, who was your, uh, who was your, uh, how do I say this? Um, cherry who, who popper. Broke, who, who, broke my, who broke my cherry as a VTuber? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which, which person showed yeah. up and I just went, whoa, I want to do that? Yeah. Let's see. Um, because we can't really, we we kind of have to scratch off uh, the Vocaloids because they would be more. Um, uh, they were more just video, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. a song. We found a way to vocalize the human voice and like augment, yeah, yeah augmented um, reality esque kind of stuff. Um, I mean, at least later on when like holographic projections became a thing um, with con with their concerts, but uh, not now. Uh, that's actually your pretty first? difficult because I saw like a lot of YouTubers at once, but I think it was one of like the first generation uh, Hololive people. First generation? Yeah, I don't remember what their name was, but they were like pink. And I saw them and I was like, ooh, cute anime girl. Oh, they play pink. video games and people watch? I want to do that. <laughs> first generation pink. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or someone. I know it wasn't Iron Mouse. It was... Uh, I oh yeah, yeah. Um, I can't I remember. They, I, I know they've graduated yeah. since, I believe. Uh, there's Fubuki. There is Matsui. I think. Um, I'm bad at this. Former members. And then yeah. more recently, uh, my VTuber senpai was uh, An Hero, which uh, they stream here on uh, YouTube. Uh, they taught me that I didn't have to wait for things to be perfect, and I could just start and slowly build and work on things. So. Without them uh, basically telling me that and helping me, I would have just sat there working on my model constantly, nonstop, over and over again without actually starting this. Hmm. Miko? Uh, Sakura Miko? I Does think that ring a bell? Been it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you say first, I, I didn't uh, think of uh, Generation Zero, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but no. Uh... Like, I just saw them, like, once or twice in passing. And I was mm. like, that. I want to do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was their appeal? They just seemed so full of life and optimistic. And their chat was like, it was alive. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm playing a game and I'm not paying attention to you. And I, I like talking to people. I like interacting with chat. I like to just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, chat's currently talking about... Uh, tabletop RPG me or you know kidnapping me in college and when I'm in my stream I try to interact with chat as much as I can one of my moderators jobs is to keep my ADHD brain either uh, turning back to chat when the game gets too focusing or pushing uh, myself uh, back to the game once chat gets too much of a focus I got you I got you um And how much uh, did this content uh, change up your, you know, daily internet entertainment or uh, intake of uh, media? I would say uh, in 2020, I really picked up on watching people. Uh, uh -huh. Lunis Honest kind of uh, dominated my brain for a while. That was a pretty big thing for me. Uh, and, you know, when that ended is when I actually like full on started. Like, the first time I streamed was, I would say, within that month. I gotcha. Just as, like, a test. And I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to do things. So, mm -hmm. uh, after that, I spent a lot more time uh, talking to people. Uh, I spent a lot of time reading. And if I'm not doing that, it's mostly watching anime in my downtime. I do a lot uh, of uh, decompression, uh, self-love, uh, you know. I need to take care of myself and make my brain feel good stuff. So, so then, yeah. Okay, so then how did you come across uh, Vroid Studios? So one of my friends uh, had started me, you know, playing more Steam games. So back in like 2017-ish, I, gotcha. I started playing games on Steam uh mostly like a terraria clones and stuff like that and i was just sitting there and 
I, in 2020, I was like, I, I you know, I want to do this. I want to make this a thing. So I typed in uh, VTuber into the thing to see if there was like any programs that were cheap and affordable so I could maybe do this on my own because there was no way I was going to be able to afford one of these high-end 2D models that are really beautiful. And with this graphia, I can't draw well enough to keep consistent All with right. the character design. So uh, <laughs> I saw Vroid and I was like, okay, let's try this out. And I just kept playing with it and trying to make designs. Uh, at first I was like, okay, I want to be like a demon girl and I want like three eyes. And that's, that's not supported by most, like if I wanted to actually do like the three eye thing with like the eye in the middle of my head, uh, mm. that would have been like a 2D thing or something beyond the scope of what I understood when I started. So that's how we got uh, the double pupil in my right eye. I got you. And mm. I was like, okay, well, this isn't going to work. I briefly thought about doing, uh, like a raccoon girl or uh, some kind of like harpy or, you know, I, I thought about a lot of different options on what I could be. And I was like, no, I just want to be, a, I want to be a cute little demon girl because one of my favorite things is uh, Digimon. Beelzemon is a demon and their lowest form is Impmon. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be a cute little imp. And that's, that's what I became. Um, yeah. No, uh, <clears throat> good thing that you mentioned that. I'm just going to pull up a cup, a uh, image. Of uh, at least one of your concept image uh, art. So, what were um, at least the uh, inspirations with the uh, first image that you uh, sent me o sent over? So I tend to not like symmetrical things. So I, got you. I like to mess with things. Uh, if you were able to zoom in, uh, I'm using the same basic eye colors that I'm using now. Uh, I wanted to kind of give off that Beelzemon uh, vibe from Digimon. I gotcha. And I like long coats. I just, this was just all of my edge lord. you know, all of the things I like in a design. Big clunky boots, Kingdom Hearts style. I gotcha. You know, cool demon uh, gauntlet arm. So I just basically put all everything I like in like one drawing. And, and then I was like, okay, I can't actually make this as a VTuber. All right. Let's simplify the design. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And so you pretty much uh, delve into a more less big. I'm going to describe it not as a less complicated, just less busy. Uh, I'm just going to pull it up. There we go. It is up. So, yeah, yeah. what were the? Uh, were you still aiming to like emulate the um, uh, Digimon Impmon? Or yes. were you trying to really incorporate the uh, other influences into so it? Around, so around this time, I was also incorporating... Uh, so I really like imps in a lot of things they show up in. There's like a bunch of like text games imps show up um, in. Uh, there's the Shin Megami games where there's imps. And they're just like a common enemy, and I like them. So I, I wanted to be an imp. Mm -hmm. And I started like thinking like, hey, I like this. But a lot of imps are depicted as being red, especially now with, like, Hell of a Boss and Has-Been Hotel cementing, you. you know, like, a basic design of imps. And I didn't want to be red, so I was like, I'm going to be purple. You don't want to be a stereotype. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, huh? I, there's so many purple imps. We're, we're, we're a dime a dozen. <laughs> I mean, one of the uh, VTubers I you know, vaguely jump in and watch occasionally. Mincubus is a purple imp girl, so, yeah. Uh, we have almost the same hair. Uh, almost is the, is the, uh... Almost is the keyword here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... But after... Uh, but, um, even so, uh, at least... After um, planning it out, you definitely went a different route with uh, how how you uh, designed at least the uh, Vroid model. So, to speak. so after so... this drawing, I started playing with Vroid oh. to try to figure something out. Yeah, we're gonna have to make um, this big. If you want to make it huge, you can. I'll just be like, I can actually. Yeah, it can. <laughs> uh, you chatters can be covered for for uh, the time being. Um, but no, uh, it definitely, uh, straight away from the more 
horny kind of. So uh, give me a I moment. Give me a I, moment. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I just uh, the more horny, <laughs> the uh, horns. I, I would like the spiky horns kind of look. Um, in addition to like uh, the. It has. It looks like uh, more of a elvish ear, so to speak, rather than the very pointy ones that you have uh, right now, and uh, a very simplified, uh, you know, clothing or outfit um, choice. So, tell me about it. Okay, so I, 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 I like most people who use Deroid suffered from that hoodie. Um, this was the first outfit I put together. Uh, with the beta version, uh, these outfit pieces were not colored, so I had to like pick a color to get them, and I was experimenting, trying to figure out how to do stuff. I hadn't really gotten into figuring out how to do hair, getting uh, layers correctly, so it was pretty difficult. Um, the horns I don't have on my head are replaced by antenna, because a lot of imps in media, especially like dragon warriors and stuff, have like these little like doodly bobber like antennae, and during mm -hmm. the beta of um, Vroid, there was a hair option called Squid Girl, which they got rid of because there's a like very famous Squid Girl uh, VTuber, or was. I don't know if they graduated. Um, yeah, so they removed that, and I used to use that for antenna. And once, I, once the upgrade happened and I wanted to like upgrade my model, I could no longer have the antenna and continue to upgrade because they were no longer an option. And they were beyond my skill to replicate on my own. So that's why I got, like, shards in my head for, like, later models, uh, trying to get horns. And, you know, in the last, like, year uh, and a half, I added these horns. Uh, they're a 3D asset that uh, I, I got my hands on. And they're just they're just my new demon horns, and I like them a lot more mm. than i did like the antennae and everything else so pretty uh, much you you've yeah. been micro adjusting um how do we say how how would you say uh how frequent were your uh, adjustments to your uh, model like i mean like how long i mean how how long would it take for you to make a no no um how long would it take for you from um one adjustment to the other to wait shit let me let me try to try to wordplay this a little bit better um so how long would it usually take for you to make a adjustment no ah dear lord i i'm i'm, I'm having issues here um <laughs> Did, uh, how did, often uh, did you update your uh, model? How how often did I have different iterations? Um, yeah. So I really quickly uh, ditched the first uh, Vroid. I would say I switched to my next design, which had a lot more of a punky vibe within mm. like a month. And I kept upgrading that constantly over that month. I think I changed it like three or four times over the course of two weeks. I gotcha. Uh, trying different hair colors, trying different uh, tones, trying to get the skin to match. Um, too much makeup, not enough makeup, getting better hair, working harder on stuff, and then come and <laughs> they finally upgraded uh, the Vroid uh, from beta to where it is now, mm. and they've been updating it ever since, and occasionally whenever they release new stuff, I check it out, because one of the things I like to do with Vroid is take the base options and see just how far I can push it. I gotcha. So generally, you. How often do you um, touch uh, programs like uh, Unity or uh, Blender? Uh, I try to avoid. I tried to avoid them for so long, but in order to get my tail to work, which uh, can't even be seen right now, unless I. I I'm gonna, can. I, is it cool if I stand on this chair real quick? Sure. Go okay, ahead. Let me just. Just don't up. don't fall. Ooh, okay. Ooh, yeah. So, as you can see, I have like my tail. In order to get that to work on my model, I'm going to just turn around real quick. And then I'm going to come back down. All right. Uh, boop. Boop. 
So, uh, no, I'm a little bit lower. How did I do that? Let's see. There we go. No, nope. like right. There we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, that I had to navigate a site called uh, Booth. I found a bone transfer stuff for an older version of Unity. And I had to swap the hair bone uh, to my hip to attach that. It's a, it was a lot of work. It took me a lot of trial and error. And that's where uh. I attached my horns and fixed my, uh, my tail. Mm -hmm. Other than uh, that, I, I tried to not use Unity. <laughs> I see, I see. And how often um, did you have... How often do you have to do that um, with your model? Or is it like... Uh... Did it automatically get built into the uh, Vroid uh, or dot Vroid uh, file so that you can just update it without needing to go through the uh, uh, Unity process? So, unfortunately, I can't. I couldn't find a way to have my horns and tail stay where I need them. The tail stays where it's supposed to be, but anytime I switch models or update something, I do have to re-add the horns and fix the tail. So mm -hmm. my laptop, which is prone to overheating, its only purpose is occasionally I use Discord Nitro to transfer a new file over. I update it, transfer it back, test it, and rinse and repeat until it gets back to where I want it. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm so it's a lot of work. It can take days, hours, depending on the design I work on. Uh, the design we're rocking right now, I'm actually wearing a shirt based on the fanfic I'm reading on Wednesdays. And uh, chat helped me design this vest. Mm -hmm. I see. I yeah. see. Um, do, I want to, do you want to talk about the... Uh... The toaster of a PC that you have right now? Oh my gosh, gosh. If you want to show a picture of that, you're more than welcome to, but... I mean, uh, I have no picture. <laughs> uh, it's in that other chat for, like, when we did Hell Diggers. Oh, oh, that but, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, to describe the toaster, it's actually a gift from my VTuber Senpai and Hero. Uh, they're a tech tuber, and they do a lot of making computers and, you know, testing them to make sure they can hold up. Uh, my laptop got to the point where it could no longer stream, and rather than have no income and have everything fall apart, they gifted me this uh, the, this PC. I lovingly refer to it as the toaster because it does not have the umph to do games like Baldur's Gate or Helldivers and still stream. And I it's mean, partially why I stumbled into this niche of uh, just being a dating sim slash fanfic reader. <laughs> because it's because what it, it can handle. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, resources. Or low resource games and such. Yeah. Give me a moment. I'm I'm pulling it up because I think it needs to, I, I, it does need to be seen. Um, because aesthetically it does has that have that uh, toaster feel. Um, <laughs> I did get a really good look at it last time, but uh, no, uh, like it kind of. <laughs> this is. The I would have. I would expect this in like R slash cursed um builds or something like that, <laughs> or uh, some sort of. First uh, PC uh, uh, thread, but yeah, this is uh, quite the uh, quite the look. Yeah, yeah, it's extremely portable too. It's lightweight. It's easy. Um, is that, is that a Dell keyboard nicely. as well? I don't even. I think it. I think it's just something that came with my actual good computer, which uh, broke immediately. I was betrayed. <laughs> no, I, I say that because I used to have. Oh no, it's a it's, it's an Asus. It's an Asus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to I, have I just, that. I just looked for my keyboard because I generally place it away from me to avoid issues while I'm uh, doing stuff. <laughs> huh. I'm not using it. All right, that's uh, I'm, that's... I'm prone to touching buttons. <laughs> I bet. Um, but uh, yeah, the toaster, the toaster. Um, oh yeah. Hmm. How much um, of a hurdle did you believe you would need to get through to get into streaming with this um, with this tech or with your um, with your build? At least uh, uh, before and during um, your streaming uh, career. So I wanted to find a affordable, cheap way. VC Face offer, offers a free option for uh, tracking, and they're constantly updating you. it. 
and it works pretty well for what I want to do with it. Uh, even if resource-wise it doesn't mesh on the current build I have with some things, and sometimes I'm forced into my PNG uh, Discord uh, reactive form. I gotcha. Um, and how often do you, uh, would you say, um, you are spending time as more of a PNG tuber over uh, um, a 3D tuber? So when I was doing Baldur's Gate, I did have to switch to either a Discord reactive or just flat up a static image. I... Uh, so it was it was frequent enough. Um, mm -hmm. I just played a date with death uh, over the last two weeks, and and for some reason that dating sim, in combination with OBS and uh, VC face opening, caused so much lag that things weren't working. And I gotcha. I was like, okay, I guess I'm a PNG for this one. <laughs> um. So how much would you just uh, say it impacts your how you uh, do content? Uh, whenever I have to actually, like, downgrade to a PNG tuber, I have to remember to go through all of my settings on, uh, Twitch and disable a bunch of my redeems, because something I do do on my channel, because I'm kind of addicted to making models, I like working on them, you. it's something I find relaxing, unless I have a deadline. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just, I really like doing it, so, uh... When I have to, like, not do it, I can't have the redeems to have people switch my models. On my stream, I have, like, eight models of different characters. They have their own lore and backstory, and they can uh, be redeemed, and I have to switch to them for, like, 15 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. um, now, how did your uh, first stream went? My very first stream? Oh, your so very much first. So much scuff. Sound oh, audio yeah. issues, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, internet ping issues, uh, so much. But I did uh, get my hands on the capture device, so I was able to do uh, gaming because before I started doing VTubing, I was streaming live action with one of my best friends. Uh -huh. And they just let me keep the uh, video capture card so I could still play video games. So because I had access to that, uh, I could get my games going. But no joke, like my very first stream, the resolution was bad. I didn't realize the game was so small. Uh, the audio issues, like I said, both on my end with the mic and, you know, with it. It was, it was, it was a mess. I gotcha. And sometimes it's still a mess, because mm -hmm. you can't be a VTuber without a little bit of scuff. And uh, what about your uh, second stream? Just as scuffed. Just as scuffed, okay. It took me a while to really learn what I was doing. I was using Streamlabs at first, and that's partially why my laptop suffers from overheating, because Streamlabs, at least back then, had a resource issue where it would max out uh, resources really, really quick. And it, I gotcha. you know, caused a lot of overheating with my laptop. So I had to find another option, and I switched to OBS, uh, and it worked a lot better. Sure, it didn't have all the cool, like, you know, pre-built-in transition sound effects. It didn't have all that, but between uh, Twitch actually having extension options, I was able to make up for that, mostly. And then I used stream avatars to make up for not being able to see chat. I one of my you. friends is gonna. My, one of my friends is going to help me later get uh, chat on stream, so I'm not completely reliant on uh, the little stream avatars. I can shrink their mm. uh, text boxes, and I'll have people being able to read chat when I have clips. <laughs> but you were it. It was a very. It was a uh, developing uh, process. So it's oh fun. yeah, yeah. It took mm -hmm. a lot of work, and every time a new update happened for OBS or, you know, the Elgato uh, software, it was always a nightmare. And sometimes, like, I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up and my my operating system upgraded, and I it was such a nightmare sometimes. I see. But I didn't give up, no matter how difficult it got. Sometimes I'd take a break and I'd walk away. But I would ultimately always come back and try to figure out how to make it work. 
And if I couldn't figure it out on my own, I would ask uh, friends. I gotcha. Now, what sort of uh, community initially did you want to cultivate? Um, like, as you began, began getting uh, regulars into your chat, what sort of... Uh, what kind of goals did you set for uh, the way you wanted to be received and have people um, talk around you, so to speak? With? Uh, I, so to be real, I just wanted... To... Oh, I apparently just got a follow. Uh, my brain just broke. Um, I thought I disabled that sound. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to... Can you ask the question again? That broke my brain. <laughs> Um, what kind of, uh, what sort of community did you want to cultivate, uh, at first? I just wanted people I could hang out with that would be willing to chat and hang out. I would, I, I prefer a lively chat. Uh, someone I got you. who, you know, they want to hang out, they want to, you know, watch me play games, and they want to just, you know, be there and vibe. So I was going for, like, chill and whatnot, and as I progressed, I, I leaned into lewd for a bit, and that got a bunch of stuff, and now chat bullies me, and I'm kind of lewd all the time. I'm being good right now. <laughs> yeah. But a good, sadly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh... So gamer, I ass- nerdy, oh, yeah, D&D yeah. players, mm. that, that's I- kind of my demographic is people mm. who, you know, enjoy a story, people who want to build a narrative. And that's kind of what I have. I guess. And I actually really love my chat. I mean, they bully the heck out of me with all that bread and the good girls and everything. But I have a fantastic time with them and I wouldn't trade them for the world. Mm hmm. I mean, would you describe yourself as, like, a lewd tuber because of this, or...? I, I used to be described as a lewd tuber because I used to lean a lot more heavily that way. Uh, I've, I've calmed down a little bit since then. Mm-hmm. I still am a lewd tuber technically, but I'm not going and playing any H games or, you know, just being full-on explicit. Uh, I but I'll you. be as lewd as I want. I'll make jokes, innuendos apparently get knocked into subspace midstream. <laughs> I I'm you. looking at you, chat. I'm, I'm just going to look directly into your eyes and be like, you know what you did. You know. Um, I assume you definitely wanted a uh, LGBTQ uh, oh, yeah. friendly. Uh, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an adult streamer, so I'm set to be mature. I uh, wanted, first. you know, a bunch of people like me. I want to hang out with other uh, trans people, other members of the LGBTQ. Uh, I don't like hate. So if something like that shows I up, gotcha. my mods, I love my mods. They're very quick to take care of anything bad like that. And uh, the murderosity of uh, just bots trying to sell me stuff. I gotcha. Like Mountain Dew showed up and tried to be a bot on my channel. <laughs> Like, uh, those the actual are... the actual Mountain Dew Twitch account uh-huh. tried to be like, oh hey, da 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 da, and my chat, my mods were like, nah, it's dead now, and I was like, I'm unsure how I feel about that, but I appreciate how quick you guys murdered that bot. <laughs> oh, I sh- you know, speaking of which, I should probably throw the ban hammer at it at them uh, real quick or after this stream, just so I don't get I don't get that in my uh, my streams, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, nice draw. With my, with my fellow VTubers, <laughs> uh, I actually uh, designed, uh, last last time you were with uh, mm-hmm. Ginger, I designed the early iterations of their model with them. And, uh, Almost Ginger, yes. Yeah. Uh, so with, their new, the, with the newest model, I was actually going for, uh, have you seen the anime Tokyo Revengers? I wanted them to look it like a me. punk. Uh, that, I wanted that... them to look like a punk delinquent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like who's just throw down and scrap at any minute because <laughs> uh, Ginger does a lot of MMA uh, I gotcha. boxing and stuff like that oh, I've I designed see. a lot of VTubers models <laughs> hmm. uh, but yeah um, of my two uh, VTuber children who are active uh, it's Ginger and um, Crimsy who is a Yandere uh, femboy I gotcha um 
So, let's see. Now, why do you think it's uh, important to have a, to be um, LGBTQ uh, friendly uh, within your community? So as a member of the community, I just want uh, them to know that I want to make a safe space where they can just come and hang out and not have to worry about everything. I want, mm -hmm. I just want them to know that they're not alone because I'm there because I wanted to not be alone and I had to grow up completely alone, cut off from that community. And I literally, I went through with my friends and with the amount my egg should have cracked and I should have figured out what was wrong with me, literally from like four years old all the way up and through like middle school, high school, everything. I had so many egg moments and I'm just like, wow, I really wish I had access to internet out where I was to mm -hmm. uh, know that I had like people I could have related to. It wasn't until much later after high school that I was on Tumblr and someone's post just passed my page and it was describing, you know, their journey, all the dysphoria they faced. And I was just like stunned because it was it was me it was everything i had been bottling up and dealing with for so long mm. so i was like okay i'm gonna pretend this didn't happen <laughs> i'm I, I, at the most i'm gender fluid you know and then i just couldn't do it anymore it's the dysphoria got so bad in the last couple years that I have a hard time even playing a male character in a video game because I just, I can't do it anymore. I played a male character for my entire life, basically. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to be, I want to be me. Mm -hmm. And I want people to feel safe hanging out with me and not need to worry about stuff because I'm not going to judge, you know, unless you're like doing something really weird. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not hurting anyone, though, I don't really care. And, you know, my chat's pretty respectful. They don't really bring that stuff up. Mostly they just pick on me because of the milk dungeon, the whole thing with the bread, which has its own story. And, uh, you know, good girl, obviously. Milk dungeon, gotcha. Milk. Yeah, milk, yeah, yeah. Milk. Oh. So I can explain <laughs> that super quick, and it's not as bad as it actually sounds. There's Go a, ahead. There's a PS2 game called Okage Shadow King. It All is right. a JRPG. It's pretty brutal difficulty-wise, at least it was back then. It doesn't hold up that way anymore. And it was the first game I actually streamed, and it's the game I was playing when I became an affiliate. So as an honor of that... I added Bad Girl Milk Dungeon as like a ridiculous point total because I didn't think anyone would be willing to hang out and watch me long enough to get that points. Yeah. I was proven wrong because my main moderator hor uh, basically uh, holds their point total over my head. They they have enough points to send me to the Milk Dungeon anytime <laughs> and, and, and they know it. And they just like, I have to sit there and be like, no, please, I'll be good. Don't send me to the Milk Dungeon. <laughs> and I have to beg them. And it's kind of funny. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the game, uh, the dungeon, the milk dungeon, you can actually go to Google and type in <laughs> Okage Shadow King Milk Dungeon, and you'll get sent to the page for the Deep Grave Pit. It is a eight to nine floor dungeon, which is extremely repetitive, and you have to defeat these urns called Milky Urns. Okay. And that's where it all came from. That's 100% where all the milk stuff came from. That's... It, I even have an emoji on my thing where I'm being crushed by one of the milk urns. <laughs> milk. So, yeah, it just kind of took yeah. out. Uh, if you want to know what a milk urn is, if you look at my uh, right uh, side of my vest, there's that little urn thing. Okay, I see. That, that's a milk urn. Ah. That's literally what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> when was the game released? Like, uh... <sighs> I want to say 2001. -ish. Yeah, yeah, those. 2001, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was released uh, uh, in a, the same year as like Kingdom Hearts One, I think. I gotcha. And it's 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 one of my uh, it's one of my favorite uh, ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Without going into a lot of it, the main character has so little charisma. 
that your party members will talk over you. Uh, when you enter town, sometimes they'll literally walk through you, not knocking you to the ground. I see. Like, you have no presence at all. Mm. So instead of like, I'm the big bad hero, you're an ordinary boy in this game. Like, your class, your, your title is just ordinary boy. I got you. Uh, and like you're there and like one of the party members title is hero, uh, mad scientist and, you know, entertainer. Like everyone has these titles and there's like a whole plot going on with you and an evil king. And it's it's really fun. I I do recommend it. And if they ever redeem that redeem, I have to pull out my PlayStation, plug it all in. And guess what? I get to play. Oh, I get to play the milk dungeon and there'll be more redeems where they can make me leave and start over or forbid party members, or attack options. I gotcha. And the goal is to get through, defeat all of the urns, and escape the dungeon before someone kicks me out. Mm -hmm. I can still um. hear I can still hear the ambient background music of that place. <laughs> it doesn't go away, like, ever. It's, it's like uh, Doctor Who, the drums. It I doesn't gotcha. stop. It never stops. Mm, drums. But yeah, that's where that um, comes from. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you did mention, uh, before that you have a dissociative, um, identity disorder, correct? Y yes. Uh, yes, I was yes. diagnosed, uh, and confirmed to have it All right. in the last oh. years. I suffered a pretty bad mind break and I gotcha. it resurfaced. It was a problem I had as a kid. I gotcha. But hey, when you're talking to yourself all the time, you don't really see it that way. So my parents wrote it off as like an imaginary friend for a long time. And then I had oh, to I see, see a therapist about it because, yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically, I've had some of uh, the other me's in my head forever. Uh, it's it's weird. Uh, I know there's a lot of different ways you could describe uh, DID. But of for course. me, it's like being a different flavor of the same person. Different flavor, uh, same person. Some days yeah, you are chocolate, so, some days you are strawberry. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you'll notice if I ever switch, I have like a difference in pitch, the way I talk and act uh, can shift dramatically. The things I like and dislike can uh, change dramatically uh, to the point where we have enough of a personality drift that, despite the fact that we're constantly talking to each other uh, and mm -hmm. hanging out with each other inside my skull palace, whatever you want to call it, mind palace, um, we have enough oh. differential in likes and dislikes that one of me's even dating someone and we had to have like a long conversation about that and yeah i got you yeah um how often do you i mean like i've switched twice this conversation alone oh don't oh don't worry don't worry i mean like uh, uh again again i'm at least i minored in psychology i I am more familiar with ADHD, uh, people with ADHD, OCD, and um, other forms. It's just like I never been able to have a uh, a really like you know long conversation or a long uh, discussion with uh, someone with DID. So I'm curious <laughs> about it. But uh, how how did you uh, how did you learn about your um, is it? Is it better to describe them as states or um, identities? I'm going to refer to them as their own people. I gotcha. So, so yeah. I'm, or others or alters. There's a lot of different ways. Everyone's going to do it differently. I understand. But for me, they're basically my family. They're my sisters. We all share a skull. We all have to take care of the same meat suit. I gotcha. One of us is a lot better at cooking than the rest of us. Jealousy. Uh -huh. And how much... they, they they actually uh, she actually has mm -hmm. patience to cook. I got so, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, much... Actually, uh, before we continue on that, all of those models on my thing are based off of uh, the others in my head. So I got you. Yeah, I got you. So uh, a couple of things. Um, how do you how do you how how do you gain knowledge about uh, these um, identities, so to speak, or like how do you remember? their likes, dislikes, and so on and so forth. Like, how did it, how does it, like, how do you think it functions, so to speak, or at least how you, okay. how would you describe uh, I, it? I, I will describe this the best I can, and I'm not going to uh -huh. do a good job at it, but I'm hey. going to try. Um, basically, 
as as a child, as early as like three or four, I started disassociating so bad that sometimes I'd have these blackout periods uh, where I was a different person. I would act differently, uh, and then I would I would come to, and I'd have no recollection of it. Um, one of the earliest alters who's still with me is Jimmy. She Jimmy. is yeah, <laughs> she is a she's 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 a delight. She's not great at talking, but she was one of my defensive shields. So when someone started being abusive to me, I would get physically uh, aggressive back as a defense mechanism, like, you know, a dog that's been cornered growling. And so we found out we didn't like hurting people, in which case it was literally like the equivalent of a chihuahua barking at you. I gotcha. Uh, so they are for all intents and difference. Uh, d they're different people, but we're pretty good at working together even if we sometimes have a disconnect and memories don't get transferred correctly. Uh, one of the people in our skull, Fives, uh, she basically works as a secretary or a film projection person, and her job is to, as we switch, basically clip the memory so we have one con uh, coherent train of thought. And as long as no one is selfish and blocks out that, uh, I have an idea of what we were talking about and I can continue going, and we're so cohesive that we can mostly function as one person as long as we don't have a stressful moment or I don't guess. meet one of our needs, at which point things change. Like, if I get too pissed off, I can switch into ballsy. If I get too hungry or bored, Jimmy will kick in and I'll just, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Jimmy generally hangs out near the front as our gatekeeper anyways. If you're ever in my streams and I just randomly rar mid-sentence and I just keep going like it never happened, that's Jimmy interjecting because either one of my moderators uh, said rar and Jimmy roared back or uh, Jimmy did it herself. Okay. All right. But yeah, uh, uh -huh. we in uh, basically in middle school, I went to a therapist about this and they worked with me on it and it got to the point where they were mostly just voices in the back of our head. I say like, I'm not one of them. <laughs> so we were just voices in the back of our host's head and she mostly ignored us, or it, it was like a whisper on the air, like the angel and the devil on your shoulder. I gotcha. And then we had a really bad thing happen to us in 2021-ish. Uh, gotcha. And uh, we broke, and basically all the doors were open, and she's been learning to deal with it ever since. I gotcha. <laughs> because, uh, unfortunately, we're here to stay. Mm -hmm. I say unfortunately because I hate having DID. I'm I'm one of the alters. <laughs> Sometimes I just really don't want to be here, and I wish we didn't disassociate into existence. I got you. Uh, I got you. However, we have friends who love us for who we are, and they understand because one of the things we do bring up when we're talking to our friends is we'll bring it up as we get to know someone. Oh, yeah, we have DID. It's why we have these personality drifts. It's why this happens. And that's what we deal with. And we have some friends who love and, you know, support all of us. I and it, it really just helps to make us feel like people, to not feel crazy, to feel grounded. Because by a technicality, I could be considered crazy. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm, I'm perfectly sane. You're exactly... Oh, yeah. You're I'm, Legion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, yeah. I am sadly, I am Legion. Mm hmm Now, how does this, um, how does this condition, um, cross over with your, uh, trans identity, so to speak? I feel like there oh, might yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. So, it actually caused a mental issue for our host for a long time, where she was worried gotcha. she stole the body from the, an actual, like, a, like, guy who existed. Uh -huh. So there was, like, a panic over it. Um, one of our uh, alters, uh, Trixie, uh, her, her whole job was to be our mask mask. And basically a lot of the more masculine things we did were a lot of her effort. But as the host uh, transitioned, a lot of us transitioned with her because we just felt more comfortable that way. And if we're going to share a body and the host wants to transition, we just adapted uh we're either she they's or she hers and it doesn't really bug us that much uh as sadly i'm the closest to being our uh host 
but I have a lot more confidence and I'm more willing to speak my mind and just let my mind go and just be a lewd little crazy imp sometimes. It makes things interesting. I gotcha. We, oh, we, boy, ref having... we refer to our mind palace for people who understand that term as the mall. I got you. Yeah. One moment, uh, I had to restart uh, my tracking app, I assume. All right. Um, but no. Uh... All right, so... What do you say you have, uh, you have completely, uh, transitioned? Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how... How was, uh... What's the word? Actually, give me a moment. I am, I'm, I'm getting bothered by the, uh... By this real... I have to... I have to restart the... I, I understand. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... Let's just say I'm 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 still functioning, and let's just say uh, we're fine. Um, so a few things. Yeah. How were your identities um, feeling during this during your uh, transition process? Uh, like uh, a lot yeah. of us were supportive. Uh, Trixie was a little bit antagonistic about it. Because gotcha. she she didn't want us to be abused. She didn't want us to hurt. She just wanted us to hide. And that was gotcha. her main focus, was just protecting us. But with uh, friends and loved ones who are also trans or accepting, we were able to come out of that. Even if family member-wise, we have like a small handful of family who still love and support us. Luckily enough is our mom. Hi, Mom. I love you. I don't know if you're going to watch this in the future, but I wanted to let you know. Oh, that's always good. Oh, yeah. Um, now, how do you think uh, VTubing appeals to both the narrow divergent and queer communities? Or uh, So, peoples? the ability to <laughs> escape and be yourself, to express yourself as you fundamentally are inside rather than the appearance you have to have in a meat space world rather than a digital, I can be an imp here. I can, you know, embrace who I am. When I see myself on screen like this, this is me. I, I feel right like this versus, you know, if I were to see our meat suit, I don't like that. I gotcha. So it's an ability to just express yourself freely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it appeals. I guess. Because you have that option. Um, and how does it uh, appeal to your identities? Or at the, this part <laughs> of your identity? Uh, I feel right. I feel content. I feel empowered. I feel like I can be me for the first time in my life. Like I spent so long just... <sighs> going with the curve and, you know, trying to ignore this part of my existence to pretend it wasn't happening, to pretend it wasn't real. And now I just accept myself for who I am. And I feel so much better. That depression I used to carry was so crippling. And seeing myself in the mirror and just hating every aspect of what I saw, my name feeling like nails on a chalkboard, like there was so much just weighing against me. And with finally being able to go through the transitioning and to just be myself, I have really good days. Like, I can be happy. <laughs> it was I so weird. Like, my, I was so clinically depressed that <laughs> they made me fill out, like, paperwork, and I had to convince therapists multiple times that I wasn't going to hurt myself because I score in the, uh, hey, let's put this girl in an asylum range of uh, depression. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just where I've been at my whole life. I've always felt this numb, empty static where I couldn't feel happy. And I just, I forced that smile and I pretended to be happy for so long. And now I can actually be happy, which means I can now feel depression again, which, you know, downside. Yay. <laughs> but hey, I'd rather be happy 
and be able to deal with those downtimes than only ever feel the downtime. Sounds good. Yeah. You thirsty? Oh, always. I'm going to drink some water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, in fact, I need to do a little something-something um, away from keyboard or away from keyboard AFK, whichever or... But, uh, all right, everybody, we are going to be doing our water break section. Uh, if you want to, um, ask questions, go ahead, ask away. And, uh, yeah, we'll get to it, uh, very shortly. I'll Yay. be back. You want me just to chill with chat and talk to them, or? Uh, pretty much. Uh, okay, give me I can do that. moment while I figure out something real quick, though. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Oh yeah, I need all the hugs. Thank you. So, chat, welcome to the Zadly Show. As you can see, we're now hanging out here alone. But hey, that's all right. Uh, things need to get taken care of. We need to fix some tracking on some ends. You know, a little bit of water, a little bit of snacks, maybe an apple or two. Who knows? But I'm here to answer your questions and hang out. What's it like being the tallest imp, which is like being the gentlest tiger? <laughs> Yeah, I, I am tall for an imp. I stand at four foot two. That is uh, how tall I am designed to be. It is the answer. It's a whole inside joke. Ha ha ha. Uh, I think I'm taller than a lot of the other VTuber imps. I like to think I'm taller than uh, Mim, but knowing my luck, uh, Mim is taller than me. <laughs> I And I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> So, yeah, how are you guys doing, chat? You having a good time? Get your snacks in, a little bit of water break yourself, maybe get up and stretch. Yeah, I am small. This this is a fact. How many hugs do I need? I would gladly take like three or four hugs, please. Yeah, legendary is Terry. My my pretty army. I I, I beseech you, my exploding penguins, rise. <laughs> This is actually really nice. I like the fire. The ambiance is nice. It's kind of relaxing. I kind of want to touch the fire, though. I see it over there. Taunting me. With its beautiful orange glow. The flickering. The warmth. I'm good. <laughs> I'm making waffles. Ooh! Watching the best member of the Itty Bitty Impy Committee. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's right. I'm amazing. I'm 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 a really you know, I have a lot of fun. I wanna hang out with more imps though. I think that'd be a lot of fun to just, you know, vibe with, you know, my imp uh siblings. Oh, so cats are not enough? Oh, I like oh, yeah. cats. Welcome oh, back. Mm-hmm. Hello, Himchan, and welcome to the Himchan Show. How can I help you? <laughs> I, um, you, know, you know, I hang out with a lot of cat girls, too. Uh, I know at least, like, four. Huh, the first, oh, the first glomp in chat history. Wow. Ooh, Ooh. I got a glomp. Yeah. I, I guess Congrats. I'm supposed to say, like, the cursed UWU sound when that happens. I'm not 100%. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I'm supposed to go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I think that's what chat wants when I do that. Yeah. What does kidnapping mean? Um, so kidnapping, it, you know, the definition of it, uh, it's not a good thing. With my friends, it means they show up with not a lot of planning uh, in advance. We don't really know what we're going to do. But I just get in the car and I go hang out with them. We usually get, like, lunch, uh, drive long distances, head to the beach or, like, a zoo. It's It's hangout time with my friends. Like, they oh, just want to be like, I'm going to kidnap you now. Let's go hang out. Or uh, an example of kidnapping would be, 
uh, you inviting me to go play Helldivers, you kidnapped me to go fight for uh, democracy. That That is a form of kidnapping. Oh, wow. So, so I viewed it as a positive a thing. Very, very general, very wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very vague. Gotcha, it's, it's, gotcha. It's, it's, it's more kidnapping, though, if it's, like, last minute. Or, like, not well planned out. Mm-hmm. In, in our case, it wasn't like that, but I wanted to use it as an example because we, 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 you, you described and invited that like a while in advance, so I knew. I gotcha. I gotcha. Like if you were uh, to be like tomorrow, hey, congratulations, I'm kidnapping you. Come hang out for a stream with me. That would be kidnapping, and I would be there, and I would hang out, and I would vibe. I see. I see. Unless I'm busy, in which case that'll I be a, that would be a uh, interesting uh, conversation, or at least an interesting uh, thing to talk about. The uh, in the case that you are legitimately kidnapped. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Zadley uh, was kidnapped. Oh, by who? I don't know. I've actually had actually had <laughs> friends like grab me and put me in a trunk and drive off with me. So, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm okay with it though. Like, we're talking about, like, a pickup truck or trunk, or are we talking oh, about... I'm like talking, a, like, a car. A coupe? So, yeah, like, yeah. or, like, a... Huh? Oh. Like, uh... Generally, like, a Honda or, like, some, like, bigger car that has, like, a nice size trunk. I actually like it more than sitting in the car. I can stretch out and just kind of relax. Especially uh -huh. if I get to bring a pillow and a blanket with me, and then I just curl up. I gotcha. It's not safe. Never do this, chat. Do not ever ride in the trunk of a car it is a bad idea because you have no safety if something hits the back of that car nope you will not be okay hmm. so it's a really 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 bad idea so i won't do it anymore but it's something i used to do oh definitely that and sleep under beds sedan how often does ginger kidnap you i wonder um Ginger kidnapped me into watching One Piece. Uh, and oh, how many yeah. episodes? <laughs> We're fully caught up. We started oh, I from see. episode one. It took a while. I got you. Yeah, uh, Ginger. So the way I met Ginger is actually really funny. Um, I was hanging out in VR chat, and I got kidnapped by our now mutual friends slash one of the roommates I'm actually living with now. And, uh, yeah, one thing led to another. I met Ginger, we kind of hung out, we vibed, we talked, and before we knew it, we're friends and we hang out a lot and we watch anime together and everything. I gotcha. Slash, you know, part of me really thinks he's cute and we're not going to go into that right now. <laughs> All right. But yeah. All right. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, Ginger kidnaps me frequently. The biggest offender of kidnapping me uh, is either Kiro or Ki. Ki kidnaps me more than anyone. I got uh, you. And they kidnap me in uh, flesh space. So uh, they'll just be like, "Congratulations, we're going." Like when I lived flesh. in California, which I no longer live. Uh, I got you. They they just be like, "Congrats, we're going to San Francisco. Let's go get some expensive mac and cheese. Oh, we're gonna go to Japantown. Let's get some authentic ramen." Hmm. Let's go. Let's go eat Flesh curry. Space. Yeah, I like the inside of a certain uh, device. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The light one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, oh my god. Anyway. When I actually used Twitter, I used to hang out and talk a lot with uh, the lewd tubers, and I was counted among them. I see. For the longest time and then i quit twitter and i kind of had you know no communication with a lot of people so uh, hmm. at least on the social media and i have to rebuild myself from scratch uh, which is what i'm doing over at blue sky right now i see you're definitely uh eventually i'll have more people mm -hmm. I, I bet the networking wasn't uh, that much of an issue for you oh no no uh no, no, no. i mean I get shy sometimes, which is hilarious, because right now I'm hanging out, vibing and chatting like it's nothing. But when I have to go meet new people or talk to people, sometimes I just have, like, little, like, panics. And I'm like, what if they don't want to talk to me? What if they don't want to vibe? I got you. Um, I suppose, uh, 
Anybody have uh, any questions for Zadwi by chat? Anybody? I I'm no? noticing uh, a lot of my chat is here. Mm -hmm. A lot of your chat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kiro, Terry, uh, Strega. Hi, how are you all doing? Hi there, yeah. I owe them lore. I have to write out lore. <laughs> like, I have the lore. I just need to transfer it and, like, actually, like, post it. I, I got you. I got you. How dangerous is my stinger tail? As an imp, it's actually a sleep toxin, so it doesn't really do much, and it's a very, very low DC D&D-wise. It's like a DC 13 or fall asleep for uh, 30 minutes, it's and uh, huh. then it's a second save, and if you fail that save, you'll be asleep for like an hour, and if you fail that save, eventually you it gets to you've slept for a full eight hours, and then you wake up. Stinger, I, I didn't, I didn't see the stinger. I saw like an average. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's mostly only in art because it's hard to get it on a Vroid and make it look good. So my stinger uh, looks like a, a pen tip, like it's a quill, like an old quill tip, because uh, imps are a contract demon, primarily. Uh, hmm. At least uh, for me. A lot of imps are actually infernal in nature. I am not. <laughs> I got you. Um, you have a KH patch? Oh, wait, wait. Also, you. <clears throat> also, do you have a KH patch on your vest? The Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, yeah. I assume. I do not have one actively on there, but I do love the Kingdom Hearts games. I did actually play through all of Proud Mode. On stream for Kingdom Hearts 2. Alright. That was a fun thing. Uh, uh -huh. That's that right there. Uh, that's my actual uh, curse mark. It is my symbol. Uh, if you'll see it in the bottom left hand uh, corner of my streams. Uh, it's also embossed in the background of my stream. Uh, for when I don't have a game up. You can kind of see it. But for the most part it gets covered. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Uh, I call it the cursed heart. All right. To anyone who knows uh, that it's also a tattoo on this character's body, you already know where it is, and we're not going to go into that. Because, you yeah. know, lewd. <laughs> um, so, looking back yeah. on your uh, journey so far, are there any uh, moments, um, achievements? realizations that stand out as a uh, particularly impactful or uh, significant imp, to your imp impactful uh <laughs> impactful yeah 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 um to your uh, growth as a content creator um honestly getting to that first hundred felt so amazing i uh, getting to that set that 200 like i never like <laughs> with how negative my family was and that ex i i Part of me believed them that no one would ever want to hang out and watch me. And getting to see that people actually want to hang out with me, it makes me feel alive. And I, I really appreciate it. And I'm going to cry. Mm -hmm. I'm I got you. I'm actually crying now. Uh, but yeah. It's, what would you like to... Uh, uh, like, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Threshold. Yeah, you asked about uh, certain, like, thresholds and stuff like that. Yes. Um, as a VTuber, I have uh, specific, uh, like, I would call them not quite goalposts, but, like, uh, like just, like, a little thing that's, like, a little bit of proof that I'm, I'm making it, that I'm making a little bit of impact that people are watching me. Uh I, I've hit a couple of them. One of them is uh, lewd, so yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of my nicest fan art is art I can never share with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. uh, that's a uh, that's a that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a uh, homework folder that nobody accesses. That's for sure. I assume. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, so, there are places you can find it, 
but I'm not sharing that information. I got you. Uh, but I've been drawn uh, a few times. There's one artist I really like uh, that does a really good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They drew a really nice one for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's the lutest one I've ever received, so I can't. I, I got couldn't you. like show it to people. I had to be like, "Hey, I got this art, and it's 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 so lewd, but I want to show it off because you know it's really, it's really, so really, 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 really." I didn't commission it. It just popped out of nowhere. Oh yeah, I have actually never commissioned uh, uh, smut. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I that was one of my uh, my goal posts. You know, like, oh yeah, hey, I am a VTuber. People are paying attention to me now. I had some person draw me inappropriately. Ten points. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone writes fanfic about me? That's like 20 points. Has it happened yet? No. Will it happen? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day. Um, like sell merchandise is like one of the things. Like a so, sticker yeah. Yeah. or like a body pillow. Like there's like a bunch of like little weird ones. My personal favorite one that will never ever happen and it's mostly out of spite again. Yeah. Uh, one of like my longtime friends didn't accept me being trans and our friendship had a huge falling out. And yeah. they're a, f a fan of the Fate uh, series. Go on. And so they play Fate Grand Order a lot on their phone. And it would absolutely thrill me to be like a guest character on one of the stupid mobile games they play mm -hmm. so they have to see me <laughs> i think it'd be really fun and like that's one of, like, the, the goal post to have been popular enough to be in like a little like cameo to show up you. as like a character in a game to have a skin based on me for a fighting game. Someone mods me into a game. There's like a lot of like little things I would like to see, but I'm not going to like ask for them. I want to see how long it takes for them to happen. If they happen. I gotcha. I, um... I like to joke because I keep getting the, the, the cursed uh, offer from, uh, you know, the raid uh, thing where they're like, Oh yeah, you should advertise this. And I'm like, I'm not gonna, unless. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, well, uh, well, uh, it's gone. Sorry. Oh yeah, there's also like specific like art styles I would like to be drawn in from like certain stuff, and uh -huh. that's like stuff I would like to see. Uh, but that's just you know little things here or there. All right, I see. Okay. Um. What would you like to achieve with your content in the long term? Um, how do you uh, envision yourself at envision your legacy as a creator? Uh, in the massive, uh, the in the massiveness of this digital sea that we find ourselves in, I will yeah. be a drop, and I accept that I will not have a big impact on this world. But to my chat and the ones I get to hang out with. I just want them to have a good time. I want them to feel appreciated. I want them to know how much their love and support means to me. So ultimately, yeah, I'm not going to have a big impact. I probably will never be a big name VTuber, no matter how much some of my chat says I could be. I gotcha. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I honestly, I just want to have a good time and vibe. And if that's all it amounts to, you know, years down the line, I haven't accomplished anything and I'm just still kind of occasionally hanging out. I'll have one because I've already won. I've gotten everything I wanted. I have friends. I get to hang out. I gotcha. I, I have like a little job because I just do this as my job now. Um, I have this thing I get to do where I actually feel alive. Like I'm actually accomplishing what I want to do. Even even if uh, I have like family members who do like a lot better at stuff like this than me. Oh, it's a it's a family business. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh. So without going into like names on family members, like one of my family members was a famous jockey. Uh, a younger cousin of mine is a famous rapper. So I yeah, gotcha. yeah. Like, I, like my I have family members who have talent who go and do stuff. And part of me wants to, like, live up to that 
that I could I gotcha. actually accomplish that. But at the same time, I I don't want to like wake up tomorrow with like two thousand followers. I don't want to have an insane growth. I like this slow, steady growth where I make friends and people who want to hang out and vibe with me, and I appreciate that much more. I don't want to mm -hmm. be a huge VTuber with like ten hundred thousand followers and chat's got like fifteen thousand people in there because I wouldn't be able to have those little one on one moments with chat where I can just talk to them and hang out because then the chat's moving too fast or I miss things or there's just too much happening at once. So like one day it could happen and I would have to adjust and learn how to deal with it. But for now, I, I just want to enjoy this. Hmm. I want to enjoy this time I have with my chat. I they mean you. a lot to me. Um, What can you see changing in your uh, content? Like, do you have anything out uh, outside of gaming that you want to do? Uh, I recently, like we added at the beginning, started reading fanfic. And I actually really dig doing that. Um, I'm practicing singing to get a little bit better at that. Uh, there I are gotcha. some sections of that fanfic I have to sing songs, some of which were personally written for that. Uh, so that's been fun. I want to get into development of stuff, maybe work a little bit on games. One of my uh, friends slash mods wants me to help them make a game because I am a creative person and I can come up with stuff and, you know, push chem to shove. If I slam my head against a program long enough, I will figure out how it works. Eventually it'll stick. Yeah. Like he's art based ones. Art based ones kick my yeah. butt though. I got you. Um, and how do you envision the growth and evolution of your content and channel in the future? How do you see yourself uh, a year from now? Uh, you know, I would like to be, uh, have like a, the option of a 2D model available within a year, because that would be pretty fun. It's one of my personal goals to eventually have a nice looking 2D model, even if I, I have you. to learn how to do it myself. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why I have that uh, that new uh, Discord reactive image that I posted uh, in the, the Helldiver one. Uh, I got you. Like, that's the style I want to be in. It's uh, a manga style by uh, Rumiko Takahashi for Run I One Half, you. Inuasha. And I, I like that style, and that's, that's where I would like to be one day. <laughs> Even if gotcha. it's not a, like a super detailed style. I, I like the look of it. It feels right. right. Personally, though, as like a channel, where could I be in one year? Honestly, probably about the same place. <laughs> Hanging out <laughs> with my chat. Maybe I'll have 500 followers by next year. Who knows? I got you. Sounds good. Ooh, ooh, I hope to have a better computer back up and running. Oh, that would so be So I can be name. playing newer games. Uh, as definitely would be uh, important. Oh, yeah. Definitely on Im the... Imp important. <laughs> Yes. In. Yeah. Um, there's uh, the free program on Steam uh, World, though. Uh, it gives uh, you hand tracking. And I, I've used that. It works pretty decently, but it doesn't work with this toaster setup. I guess. And gotcha. I would like to have hands so I, uh, chat can see how much I move my hands when I talk. Because I've been mm -hmm. moving them this whole time, but it's not like it actually does anything. I got gotcha. you. So I could see myself a little bit uh, busier than I am now, streaming a little bit more often, because this is what I do. Uh, between DID and all of the uh, multitude of things I have to deal with mentally, this is what I can handle. This is where I feel right. I don't feel rushed. And if I do switch midstream and I'm someone else, I can keep rolling with it. I can even go as far as to switching the model to who's in the front at that time if I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. Even if Zadly is our main model and the, you know, the focus of our channel. I gotcha. But yeah, mm -hmm. I would like to grow more. Even if it's just a little bit. I gotcha. And I like the nice, slow, steady thing I've got going. Sure, I'm three years into this, and I haven't hit 300 followers yet, but that was the goal. 100 a year was, like, the minimum goal I wanted to do. 
So if before the end of this third year of streaming uh, happens, I'll have won. I'll have gotten. I'll have gotten my goal. I got you. Um, how are you feeling right now? Uh, pretty, uh, pretty hyped. I could probably, like, go and play a game. I don't really need to decompress after this. This has been kind of relaxing. I just get to chill Good. and vibe with you. Nice, nice. And talk a lot, which I'm, I'm decent at. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got non -stop, you. Non-stop, imp chatter, let's go. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, wrapping up now. All right. Right. I have one last fan, uh, fun fact about the model, since you did mention my ears. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so you notice that they're wibbly-wobbly? Yeah. Uh, it's because I used the Vroid cat ears to make them. Oh, how, oh, yeah. how cute. Yeah. With enough mm -hmm. time and effort, you can do a lot with Vroid. Oh, yeah, very much. And that's one of the things I like to show off with all the models I make. They're all made with mostly basic, just free in-the-game assets that they come with. I got you. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, that should conclude our interview. If you desire to check uh, Zadily out, um, her... Uh, sorry. Her information is down in the description below. Check her out. Do yeah. things. Um, be sure to like, yeah. comment, yeah. subscribe to her, whatever you're uh, going to do at this point of the interview and uh, have a good time. Uh, Zadley, do you have a uh, stream you'd like to uh, promote mm -hmm. or an upcoming uh, thing you want to So uh, tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, 6 p.m. to uh, 11 p.m. EST, I'll be reading more fanfic. So if you just want to sit there and have some background noise or come and talk to me in chat, you're more than welcome to do that. Chat will also probably break me. <laughs> Because it's something they like to do. So if you just want to come hang out and vibe, I stream as regularly as I can. And other than that, I just want you guys to have a wonderful night. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Himchan, for having me. Thank this you is, for coming, Zadley. Been, yeah, this has been extremely relaxing and fun. I look forward to playing more Helldivers with you and other games. So if you need an extra uh, for anything, I'm there. Of course. Because if I have the time, I'll do it. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. All right. Also, chat. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us. I despise everyone here. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, bye.